My arms were crossed in front of me. They were secured behind my back. I was firmly strapped into a device called a straight jacket and I was terrified. But I wasn't terrified because I was strapped into a device called a straight jacket. I was terrified because I was getting ready to walk on stage and tell the entire world my deepest, darkest, most embarrassing secret. He'd been to numerous doctors before, but none of them really knew what the problem was. There were talks of obsessive compulsive behavior, movement disorders, and ADD, but this doctor was different. This pediatric neurologist knew exactly what the problem was. Tourette's syndrome and she started the teenager on medication that did little to stop the annoying ticks and twitches. Today, I'm gonna to share with you about resiliency. It's not physical resilience we're here to discuss. Today, we're gonna to talk about mental toughness. We're gonna to talk about the capacity to quickly overcome some of life's unexpected and sometimes overwhelming challenges. When you're like me and you have these uncontrollable tics and sometimes people literally make fun of you for no fault of my own. I didn't mean to do it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't catch Tourette syndrome because I made some dumb decision. I've had Tourette syndrome my entire life. But when you have this and people make fun of you, when they try to make you feel small, when they try to alienate you or embarrass you, you develop resilience. Who expected several years ago that we would the entire world, not just a few of us, but the entire world, not just our country, but the entire world would be affected by a global pandemic. Who would have expected the changes in the industry, things that have been established for years and years and years, all of a sudden, quickly, would be turned upside down, and then all of you would have to adjust. These are things that we have to be able to deal with. And so the difference between illusion and reality, like I was talking about with uh, the newspapers, that the illusion is that sometimes the world tells us that, we, that we're going to have to deal with things that feel too big to overcome. Sometimes we tell ourselves that we have these challenges in front of us that seem impossible to deal with. The reality is when we know how to deal with these things, we can, in fact, do so. The difference is all about one thing. And while this talk is about resiliency, what this talk is really about is power. Because you either become powerful or you don't. You either feel like you're a victim or you find a way to empower yourself so that never even crosses your mind. These unexpected challenges, these challenges that sometimes feel overwhelming, and what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the challenges that it looks like a wall that is so big you can't get over it, or, uh, or that is so wide you can't go around it, it's too thick to, to, to get through it, and you're just looking at this thing going, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. That's the type of challenge I'm talking about, because when I sat in that doctor's office at age 13, and that doctor came out and said, you have something called Tourette syndrome. I didn't realize it, but it was a huge moment. Why was it so important? From seven until 13, my family, nobody, I didn't know, my family didn't, we, we didn't know what it was that I was dealing with. We didn't know how to manage it. We didn't know how to treat it. We just knew that it was do, I was do, these, these things were happening. I was doing these things. When the doctor said, this is what you're dealing with, all of a sudden, things became clear. We didn't have all the answers at that moment, but we could start identifying it. And all of a sudden, this thing, this big giant thing that had been over, the shadow had been over me for years, all of a sudden it started to shrink just a little bit because it wasn't a mystery anymore. Magicians love mysteries, we do. But not all mysteries are good mysteries. Sometimes you need the answer. And by identifying it, all of a sudden, we started to get a handhold on it. Now, it's not this nebulous thing that makes me feel, ugh. I'm sharing my feelings, but these could be your feelings as well. It's not just this, this thing that is hanging over you, making you stressed out 
all of a sudden by saying, hey, this is the thing I am dealing with, you get a handhold on it. I truly, I truly believe that when you're honest with yourself and you acknowledge what you are dealing with, I really do believe it is an act of bravery because it's so easy to just put your head in the sand and say, I don't want to deal with this. But by deciding to take our challenges on, head on, we start to empower ourselves. The first two resilience tools are to identify what you're dealing with and then be willing to talk about it. Resilience tool number three is the thing that I lacked. I lacked compassion. You see, compassion is fundamental in the development of resilience. But I'm not talking about compassion for other people. I'm very compassionate. Where I lack compassion, and so many high performers do, is for myself. Really critical of myself. Tough. I'm going to be my best. I'm going to push myself. I'm going I'm to achieve things that other people cannot achieve. And it's very easy to criticize yourself, even if it's something you don't have control over. The golden rule says treat other people the way you wish to be treated. I say treat yourself the way you wish to be treated. If you're kind to yourself, how in the world will you treat other people around you? The simple fact of the matter is these obstacles that sometimes feel so personal, no offense, but you're not, you're not so unique that other people aren't dealing with these things. Everybody is dealing with something, and there are plenty of other people in the world dealing with the exact same thing that you're dealing with. You're not alone in the pain, the frustration, the difficulty that you're dealing with. We can immediately start becoming more, start feeling more resilient we can immediately start more becoming more powerful. When we do each of those things, when we maintain that perspective, when we look at life and we're thankful for every breath that we take, these big challenges that seem so big just start to shrink down to nothing. And sometimes when we feel so small, all of a sudden we grow so big. I promised you that we would begin at the end. And so there I was, standing on that stage, Firmly strapped into a device called a straitjacket. Straitjacket was invented by uh, a French upholsterer in the late 1700s. It was developed as a way to protect hospital staff and out of control patients from themselves. When it was created, it was believed to be impossible to escape from such a device. Very consistently, everybody just walked up to say, this is the best way to start a conference. And, this and was, how amazing you were, we thought, and how inspired they were by your story and everything you said. Uh, we thought awesome. this was going to be business related, but this was personal and going to change how I approach <laughs> me to affect my business in the future. So, thank you so much. Thank you. My name is Amy Crockett. I'm with the Correctional Management Institute of Texas, and we asked Jason Michaels to present at our mental health conference to over 375 corrections professionals across the state of Texas. Uh, to see them coming out of the presentation inspired, excited, smiling, and giving me positive feedback made it worth the opportunity to have him here. Jason, I thought uh, your time with this group was spot on and uh, couldn't have been more meaningful for a group of people who do work to improve people's lives every day and I think what you did for us today has helped us make our lives better. For that we thank you so much.